brightlingsource.com here and um, we're taking a look at an Omega uh, Seamaster chronometer. Um, this is the non-bond version with the black dial. Um, this is the dial that I prefer um, over the bond one. It's because I think the black contrasts really well. Uh, so, so it looks like on. It's a pretty good size. Uh, 41 millimeters according to Omega's site and uh, fairly thin at 11.5 millimeters and 150 grams uh, so it's a pretty decent weight um, of course it has the Omega clasps that, uh, that always come on the Seamasters. I really like these clasps I think they're really nice um, one thing I don't like is sometimes how they open when you have to squeeze them here it, you end up pinching your your wrist a little bit um, but otherwise they're pretty good it has the back um, most of the newer Omegas have something that you might not be able to see on there but it's a it's a red dot and it show it's it's in between the case back and the and the case and it shows whether or not the movement the, the case back has ever been opened before and this one has it and it hasn't been opened um, um, as you can see there's the helium valve here and the crown here and uh, the water resistance rating on this one is 300 meters um, has the unidirectional crown for diving and uh, it run, has a caliber uh, 1120 inside it which is based on an ETA 2892 um, so it's pretty reliable see it's got uh, the the wave pattern on it and the really large glowing indexes you probably can't see it here try to get it to glow a bit you can actually kind of see it there um, so this is uh, probably one of my uh, my favorite models from the Seamaster line I, I kind of wish it was a little bit thicker like the Chrono is um, I also have the Bond Chrono which uh, I'll probably have a review up of soon as well but there are a few details like that Omega does really well with her watches, like the lugs here, um, the alternating brushed and polished finish here, and uh, the helium valves are nice too. I really wish that uh, instead of using these um, these pins for bracelet adjustment, they start using some screws like like most of the other higher end manufacturers do. But um, I guess everything costs money, right? So. Doing that sort of thing would increase the cost of the watch. Um, and Breitling, or sorry, uh, Omega bracelets are relatively affordable, so so that's sort of a nice thing in a lot of ways. Um, something I don't always take a look at here is uh, the documentation that comes with them. Omega still uses the cards, which is pretty cool, and the watch uh, reference number as well as the uh, the um, serial number is on all the stuff in it and it's pretty interesting because it tells you that it's an automatic and that it's a certified chronometer and a few of the other features of the watch like the water resistance rating which is kind of cool um, this one didn't come with the uh, the wallet that usually comes with most Omegas for for the cards um, but on the Omega also you'll notice um, that the serial number is right there on that lug. Really, really small. It's actually really hard to read unless you whip out a loop. But, um, very nice understated watch. Good for traveling and stuff like that when you don't want to be too obvious with a large brightling on your wrist or something. I think it suits me pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this watch and I hope you guys enjoyed the review.